Okay, welcome back. We are here live in Boston, Massachusetts. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is HP's Vertica's end user conference. A lot of practitioners, a lot of experts here. And this is where, it's not a big event, not a, not a lot in terms of HP news and HP products about the customers, the ones that are on the front lines doing all the innovative work. And uh, Dave and I are, are pleased to be here with, uh, with HP. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante at wikibon.org. We're here in Boston with Chris Sandland, who is the Vice President of Marketing, HP Vertica. This is really your show. You know, when you told yes. me that you were going to do this in August, this, in the first you know, inaugural event, I was like, okay, it's pretty ambitious, thinking you might get a couple of hundred. You got 700 mm -hmm. people here yep. almost, yep. mostly practitioners. You know, great, congratulations. Yeah, well this is, it's our show, but it's also our customers and our partner show, because we really wanted to feature the stories of what our customers are doing with the technology and, and what our partners are doing with the technology, because their ecosystem is so important to us. So that's really what we, this wasn't even intended to be a show. This was started as really a user group meeting because we like to have our users talk to each other. We're building an online community where you know, we've obviously got a in-person community. We said, let's get them all together. Boston, nice time to come in the summer. You know, we took some of, our, um, some of our customers to the Sox game on Sunday, some who came in early. So it's been great. I think yeah, some people thanks for that. Must be in my junk folder, the invitation <laughs> to the Sox game. So I, gotta, I missed it anyway. I didn't, want, I didn't want to go down there. Yeah, exactly. yeah, stuck in Cape Cod. Exactly. Uh, no, in all seriousness, you have your wind at your back, Chris. Yep. I mean, you guys had a great HP Discover. You guys mm -hmm. were headlining Meg's keynote in terms of uh, in the software group. You know, and, and the, the shiny pebble uh, within the software group right now because the demand for big data is really, really strong, right? Mm -hmm. So hot product, hot market. Turnaround's happening big time within HP. We're seeing that, we saw at HP Discover. The customers here are not, they're not lightweights. I mean, you have some serious customers here. Yes, we do. Not kicking tires, but actually plowing the fields mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a modern era of, of mm -hmm. computing. Um, you know, we had uh, uh, GM on earlier, he's talking about you know, the, the mission and everything, but, you, but as a marketer, you've got to turn that into the story. So when you look at that, mm -hmm. what opportunity do you say to yourself, okay, okay I, I want to kind of dust off, the, make this a shiny pebble and showcase the customers. Mm -hmm. what, what do you look at? What are the core things that, that shine out to you that you polish up? Well, you know, it, it somewhat depends on the customer, but I think in all cases, it's how they really got value. I mean, I moderated a panel earlier today with a few customers about, you know, how did they get this by the CFO, you know? And in many cases, the CFO was pushing them to do it because they, you know, but where's, where's that real business value, monetary value? It doesn't even have to be for a business. I mean, we heard from DNC this morning, you know, how they used it to win an election. So, um, you know, it's really though, it's where's that tangible value? Where can it really show that this paid off for, me, for my a, organization? We had a customer, uh, one of your uh, customers come on here, and this is Candace, this wasn't scripted. Yep. <laughs> the cube is not scripted at no. all. No, it's and not. he said, quote, he said, quote, you know, I was skeptical. Mm -hmm. He goes, my, my peer was hostile. This is not happening. We're oracles kick ass, um, and then he, they were blown away. Mm -hmm. Is that consistent? Can you, is there other anecdotal data points you can share around those kinds of testimonials? And, and this is not just some back end legacy yep. shop. This is guys really innovating. Well, I can tell you, this has been a dream place to be as a marketing guy because I came in here. I joined the company about a year ago, and I came in here and I started talking to our customers, and because that's always what I've been about, you know, is let's kind of hear what the customers say. And the customer base here is, I mean, you, you're never going to have 100% satisfaction, but this is about as close as I've ever seen in my career. So it's great. And people really like the technology and they like what the technology can do for them. Well, things, dude, they're yeah. innovating, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not, yeah. you know, a lot of times you talk in the, in the DWBI world, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I can't make this stuff work. I'm exactly. patching stuff together. It's, last night at the, uh, the reception, I mean, there's a lot of innovation going on. A lot, it felt like a startup mentality amongst mm -hmm. your customer base. Well, we're really trying to retain the soul of a startup here. We really, really are. I mean, we're trying to leverage the scale of HP, but at the same time retain the soul of the startup. And it's, it's a, of a startup, I should say. And it's, you know, it's interesting because those are two very different types of environments. But I think we've done a pretty nice job of blending them. So, and you know, I know it's something that Colin's very much about. Um, Colin and I go way back, and you know, this is, uh, this is really why I'm here too. And and it's, it's a great culture. It's a great culture and our customers are a part of it and our business partners are a part of it. And you know, you guys are a part of it too. So we're really glad you're here. So, so Colin was saying last night to John, I mean, you know, we had a conversation. He was saying you know, the great thing is that Meg's allowing you guys to be relatively autonomous uh, at the same time 
you're trying to leverage the best of HP. So yes. my question to you is competitively, how has that affected your ability to go up against the IBMs, mm -hmm. the Oracles, uh, you know, the, the, the Teradatas? Mm -hmm. Maybe talk about the competitive environment a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well definitely the work that we've done to leverage the scale of HP has really helped in what you would call the higher end of the market. The, the big enterprise deals, the big name customers. Guys that wouldn't maybe talk to you before? Uh, um, they would talk to us, suck but your brain we definitely, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, the, the, they're very focused on, first of all, they've already made significant investments in many cases in HP, you know, in some technology stack. They love the idea, by the way, that HP is not about forcing you into the HP stack, that HP is about openness, and so we have, you know, that's why we're featuring this open, open ecosystem. In many cases, our open ecosystem, or at least in some cases, you know, there's, it's businesses that HP is in in other parts of HP, but we really want to be about what's doing right for the customer. Um, but yeah. No, it, it's, it's definitely helped us to be able to leverage the breadth and scale of 1HP. I mean, if you've been into the partner area, I know you guys have been over here filming, but you can see we've got a whole 1HP area, but we've also got a lot of other partners as well. So, but that ecosystem, and certainly the HP ecosystem, has helped tremendously. It's a good vibe out there. We, I, yeah. I have to say that from the customer standpoint, it's a good vibe. Like I said, not, no, no, no lightweights here, all heavy, heavy hitters in terms of mm -hmm. folks who know their chops on NoSQL, but also structured data, also you know, really pushing the envelope on BI and data mm -hmm. warehouse and all the cutting edge stuff around business intelligence yes. and competitive advantage, so can, props for that. Um, but I do have to ask you about um, the Vertica is now integrating with HP, mm -hmm. wins at your back, and you guys have a lot more resources, more muscle uh, mm -hmm. as, a, as an organization, that Vertica, so a yes. you know, great place to work. We've heard that from other people. But I want to ask you about the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Every company has an ecosystem sly. Oh yeah, we're in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. we, got a, we got an ecosystem angle, but sometimes there's a lot of false promises in there. Mm -hmm. right, so I got to ask you, you're at the beginning of this kind of, kind of a clean sheet of paper mm -hmm. with legacy of partnerships that an HP has a good reputation in, and channel, integrators, mm -hmm. et cetera. Right. So what's your strategy? How are you going to put that together? And, and what's your message to people in the ecosystem? And what what are things happening? What yeah, we well the ecosystem, I mean, we, we've broken the ecosystem into multiple parts. I, I've always said you really have kind of three different types of partners. You have partners that you sell to, i.e. your OEM partners, and we've got a very big ecosystem there. You've got partners that you sell through, which is the reseller channel, which HB has effectively an unmatched you know, reseller channel, and you know, both domestically, internationally, and we've really been working to extend that. And then you've got the partners you sell with which are the technology partners. And, um, you know, and you, you're seeing a lot of them, I think you've probably had some of those on as well. So, and, you know, and then you can sub-segment that down, and you've got your professional services, your training partners, your global SIs, so, so it really, you know, the, the answer kind of depends on what kind of partner. And so, but we've just put a lot of resources behind this and in trying to figure out how to work with these partners the right way. And, but ultimately, it's not even so much about the relationship with the partner, it's about the joint relationship that the partner and we have with the customer. And that's where we really put our focus. So, you know, it's sort of like I said when we talked about when we announced Haven a few months ago, you said, well, how's it integrated? Well, it depends upon the solution we're trying to build for the customer, really. And it's sort of the same thing, I would say, about our partnerships and our partner ecosystem. But it's about going in together and doing the right so thing on the go -to for market, the So on the go-to-market, you have a direct sales force and indirect strategy, so direct and indirect, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the combination. You have a lot of legacy partners. Accenture sponsored um, the lunch today. Heard some of the stuff on the security side that's pretty impressive mm -hmm. and challenging for them to do. Yes. Um, but you got to go out and you got to provide some real easy to sell solutions for partners. Um, what's, what's the plans? I mean, is there special programs, anything in particular you, you want to share? We're investing very, very, very heavily in enablement and training because although you say easy to sell, I mean, that is one of the, I wouldn't say it's a challenge here, and in a way it's a good thing for the partners. It's a, it's a very good thing for the partners who are good at it because really making big data work. I mean, big data has gotten so big. I mean, everybody's calling everything big data right now, right? But it, the concept and kind of, it, it requires actually a very consultative approach and it's, you know, it's not necessarily an easy, easy sale. And it's not like there's necessarily that's a an opportunity big data in a box solution, right? But that's so an opportunity for services for a partner, absolutely. right? That's where the gross profit is. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, again, it depends upon the type of partner. Modeling. That's not universally true, but for a lot of partners, it's absolutely true. So. so Chris, you mentioned Haven before. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an example of something where you know, you're able to, you could, I, I guess in theory, you could have cobbled this together as a you know, startup, mm -hmm. but it would have been a lot harder and you maybe, maybe wouldn't have had it as a complete picture. So talk about Haven a little bit, you know, how that all came together mm -hmm. and where you want to see that go. 
Yeah, well, I'm actually, we could have cobbled it together with partnerships as a startup. I don't think any startup could cobble it together themselves, truthfully. Right. So, no, absolutely. Um, you know, I think the, the proof point for that has really been, and it was funny because I had, um, I had somebody ask in one of the panels I moderated earlier, and they started asking the customers about Haven, and the customers don't really know Haven, but they do know that they are trying to figure out how to deal with structured data, unstructured data, you know, integrate Hadoop with their analytical systems and, you know, leverage their infrastructure, where does the cloud fit in? And so they're trying to figure out how to bring all of this stuff together, right? And make it work together and make it work the way it's always promised to. And they know, you know, these technologies should be working together and working together to solve problems as opposed to, you know, some predefined integration formatting that may work for one use case but doesn't work at all for another. So, so it's really about flexibility and openness and, you know, I talked about I, think, I know I talked about this when I talked to you guys a couple months ago at Discover, about loose coupling of components. And so taking these capabilities, you know, unstructured data, we're getting a lot of questions and requests about that. I, that keeps coming up because, you know, we do a lot of work um, in areas like life sciences and telecommunications and, you know, media and entertainment where they're just dealing with more and more and more unstructured data, but they want to be able to, um, you know, interpret it, they want to be able to transform it, but ultimately you need to be able to analyze it. And so in a lot of cases, it's not just about analyzing the data, but it's also about transformation and then creating common repositories and you know, places that you can sort of, okay, here's, here's where we're running the analytics, but the data's coming in from all over the place and it's coming in all sorts of different forms. And so there's a lot of connecting and trans transforming that needs to go on there. And that's very much what the Haven Umbrella is about too. So it's not just analytics, it's really about being able to take, you heard Meg say this morning in her opening comments, you know, it's about 100% of your data. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's really what we're trying to do. Here. Well, so when you talk, you hear a lot of talk about data-driven organizations. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the, the great thing about big data is it's, it's created this awareness mm -hmm. of the imperative to be a data-driven organization. Mm -hmm. So, but, but my question is not one of technology, it's one of organization. How are your customers dealing with that imperative, uh, you know, who owns the data strategy? Are they are they thinking about that, or are they largely still leading with with technology, and they're going to figure that out sort of the back end? Yeah, well, you know, I, I've talked a lot, and I talk a lot internally. I think I talked to you guys when I previously talked to you as well about. I, I felt like. You know, I've always been a big fan of the, the book Crossing the Chasm and the Chasm Group theories where they talk about how technology as it becomes more of a mainstream thing kind of goes from being more of an IT buy to more of a line of business buy. And I think truthfully where we are right now is right in that spot in the market because the, the short answer on our customers is they're kind of both. And it sort of depends. A lot of our earliest customers were very much technology visionaries. And you know, if you talk to somebody like Dan McCaffrey at Zynga, you know, th these are somebody who sort of can look at a you know, extremely scalable, extremely high performance, new ge next generation database five years ago and figure out cool things he could do with it, right? And so we definitely had a, more of an IT centric early buyer, like up till now, but we are absolutely seeing more and more and more and more line of business involvement. And it may not necessarily be the decision maker and it may not necessarily be the ultimate buyer, but they're certainly becoming more influential because, you know, it's not just CIO anymore, CMO, CFO, COO, you know, it doesn't have to be C-level, in many cases it's not. Our customer, what you're seeing is people who are now like the VP of analytics, is you're seeing these titles, and they neither work for the business nor the IT organization, mm -hmm. they play a big bridge role in between the two. Right. And so, you know, it varies depending on the customer, and it definitely varies depending on when they became a customer of ours, um, because a lot of our early customers did tend to have more of a tech centrism, but the market is absolutely going towards, and this is why, you know, initiatives like Haven and getting our customers together, not to just talk about speeds and feeds, but about what they're doing with it and how they're getting value out. That's, that's why we set this meeting up in the first place. And it's, and it's really always good great. to have end users talking to each other because you've got yes. best practices, you've got this openness, it feels, and feels uh, great for everyone to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it kind of erases some cognitive dissonance. Everyone has that little, little doubt of the right thing, but you know, you hear people saying, oh, you work at you know, XYZ company, and oh my God, that's massive production environment. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're laying BI on top of it, you're doing ETL in the back, and well, I want to do it. So a lot of sharing going on, that's great. Yeah. And they're uh, sharing the issues they're having too, and, they're and how they solve them. So With you guys what, and, the, and the peers, which, yes. which we love. And we're doing that online too, through yeah. MyVertica, so absolutely. And that's it's cool. obviously open source based principles, so that, that's all great stuff. But, but I want to ask you on a personal question. You've okay. seen the movie before, you're new to Vertica, mm -hmm. we've known each other prior, you understand the enterprise. Moneyfall or another movie? You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> follow her literally on Twitter and, yes. and friends. Um, but you know, but in all seriousness, you've been an analyst, you've mm -hmm. been studying the enterprise space mm -hmm. for a long time, especially the enterprise collaboration mm -hmm. 2.0, so-called 2.0, that you know, seems 
seems to be happening every year mm -hmm. in the past decade. Yep. What's changed now? I mean, there's always been that talk, and you know, we've talked about this with SAP and Vishal Sikha talking on SOA in 2001, mm -hmm. service-oriented architectures, all happening now, mm -hmm. right? So, but what's different now than as, just going back five, seven years mm -hmm. ago to now, what major things are in place, didn't happen, don't need to happen, yep. and what's your view of the future? Well, you know, that's a, it's, that's a big question that we could probably spend days talking about. We should have a conference on that, right? We have but, a crowd chat. But to me, actually, I think what it really is is that technology is no longer threatening or frightening or scary or intimidating for non-technical users. And so, you know, we're now, there's a comfort level with technology in the C-suite aside from the CIO that wasn't there before. So it's interesting, so it has some outcomes. One of the outcomes is you can't just pitch some pure technology vision without being able to back it up and show how it's going to be used and show how it's going to pay off and then show customers who it's actually paying off for. So I think you know one of the things about, you know I mean, I was an analyst in the 90s and there was a lot of pitching stuff that wasn't going to ship for two or three years and it was the next big idea and sometimes it became the next big thing and a lot of times it didn't you know so but now it's more it's much there's a much more pragmatic customer base I think out there that really it's show me you know it's don't tell me it's show me but also show me where the value there's is. There's no more head fakes basically the information is a lot harder. It's, it's a, a lot, lot harder to pull a head mm -hmm. fake because the yeah. information the transparency social media and, and whatnot. Because the customers can talk to each other and say hey this is really working or this isn't really working and so the ability to sort of control the message, you know, marketers, and I'm a marketer, right? Marketers in the media in the past could kind of control the message, this is what's coming next, because the customers weren't really able to very easily interact with each other and say, you know what, yeah, that actually works pretty well. You know what, that doesn't work at all. Now they can very easily. And, and, and so that's I think it keeps us all honest. That's a major change, mm -hmm. and two, the fact you can actually measure and understand your customers. We've heard your yes. customers say that. How are you going to how are you going to take those two factors, just those two factors alone? The transparency, openness of information, mm -hmm. the open source kind of concept, uh, the credo, if you will, yep. um, and then obviously measurement and, and data. I yep. mean, they can now, as a marketer, what are you going to do as, as the VP of marketing? Well, I, using those two I, I think the thing we we you know and again it's what this event's been all about and it's why it's been so gratifying to see it even you know early August see <laughs> so many people come to this event I mean we sold this thing out two weeks ago and we had to like close the doors because the fire marshal was going to shut us down we kept adding people it was great it was you know it's the first year we ran it it was you sort can, of unexpected you but you always I think go to the convention center yeah, next door well it's there <laughs> well believe me that's you know we'll be back and we we know that because we like having it here because the other nice thing about having it in Boston by the way is our developers can come meet our customers as well that's been huge for us because you know sometimes we can take a couple to events or in other places but here we can just bring them out and bring them in and we've got the whole developer zone going to the partner zone but you know back to your question it's really about you know getting the customers together and talking with them I don't know I feel like I'm repeating myself but that's that's what it's all about I mean you get your customers talking to each other you get them talking to you and again we're doing a lot of work online as well through my vertica to really build our community there and so, and that's really the participation rate on that has been skyrocketing. What's the URL well, so. for the folks out there? Um, well, it's vertica.com, and then it's my.vertica.com is okay. the community, but the website is just vertica. Okay, my.vertica.com. My okay, great. Yes, exactly. Okay, exactly. Chris, exactly. thanks for coming on the cube, and uh, final, I'll get you the, give you the final word um, the, for the event. What do you want people to, to to walk away from the folks who aren't here? Tell them about the vibe here, mm -hmm. and what you want people to walk away with about the. About I this really event. want them to walk away feeling like they're really part of a community. And I think for those of us in the company and our customers and our partners, at least I know I, I already have because we really take it to heart, but I hope that everybody who comes here really feels that they, you know, they built relationships and their personal relationships, their professional relationships, they're part of a community and they're part of a community that wants to make each other successful. So that's, that. if people walk out of here, you know, when we wrap things up tomorrow afternoon, feeling that way will have been very successful and, uh, and we'll be back. So, okay, hopefully you, with you guys too. So. We're here, then we're obviously on the ground, we're sharing data, it's an open environment, very collaborative. This is HP, they're all about the stories of their customers, let the, let the customers do the talking, uh, literally walking the talk with customers and obviously openness and, uh, and, and that's the HP way here. Uh, live in Boston, this is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>